Good morning. Uh, welcome here to uh, a nice sunny morning here in, in uh, where I am, Tuny Manor. Sorry, just adjusting the camera somewhat. Um, I've switched over to my tablet to record this, so uh, I hope this uh, means it's a little bit better. Um, and I hope, yeah, we don't get quite the same um, uh, issues that we have. Sorry, I'm just playing around with things at the moment. Oh, Chloe, do what I'm doing. Uh, oh, hi. oh no, it's not what you're seeing. <laughs> Oh, <clears throat> all sorts of things are coming up on my screen and I'm slightly worried now about um, what I've managed to do. Uh, yes, hopefully. Oh, I don't know if it's gone dark or it seems to have gone dark for me. That's better. What a nightmare. I should just stick with what, what I was doing before. Uh, great to see you this morning, or great to, to be with you this morning. Um, today is a day where we remember Bernard Abbot of Clairvaux, teacher of the faith from 1153, but also William and Catherine Booth, founders of the Salvation Army. So uh, just at the beginning of uh, our worship, I thought I'd read uh, about them, if I can find them, yes. So I thought we'd go for William and Catherine, founders, founders of the Salvation Army. Uh, William died in 1912 and Catherine, I believe, in, in 1890. So born in Nottingham in 1829 and educated privately, William Booth was an apprentice pawnbroker and he ex when he experienced religious conversion at the age of 15. He moved to London and in 1851 joined the Wesleyan Reform Union. Three years later, he transferred to the more radical Methodist New Connections, which, ex which accepted him as a ministerial candidate and an itinerant evangelist and preacher. In 1855, Booth married Cam Catherine Mumford, born at Ashburn in Derbyshire, also in 1829 the daughter of, of a Wesleyan lay preacher. She had been expelled from the Brixton Wesleyan Church for excessive zeal. Interesting thing to be expelled from for, isn't it really? Despite being in constant pain, Catherine bore four children and later started and ran the women's work of the Salvation Army. She ensured that from the first, she, ins she ensured that from the first woman, women had a place in the army. Excuse me. She ensured that from from the first women had a from the first. Sorry, can't get my tongue around these things. Um, sometimes she ensured from the first that I've lost my place now. That women had a place in the army's leadership. A gifted teacher in her own right, she became affectionately known as the mother of the Salvation Army until her death from cancer in 1890. After separating from the Methodist New Connection in 1861, William Booth continued his, his ministry independently. In 1865, the Booths founded the Christian Mission in Whitechapel in East London to propagate the Christian faith and to furnish spiritual and material aid to those in need. Much later, in 1878, at the height of jingoism in, when Britain nearly went to war with Russia over Constantinople. The mission, which for some time had informally been used using military rank and terminology, officially named, changed its name to the Salvation Army. Members of the army, equipped with uniforms and flags, drums and cornets, were often greeted with riotous, dem riotous demonstrations when they first appeared on the streets. Some suffered assault and some were arrested for a breach of the peace. Having famously asked his son the question, what would the devil have, why should the devil have all the best tunes, William encouraged salvationists to set their hymns and songs to the pop tunes of the day. The army is coming, amen, amen, to conquer this city for Jesus, amen. We'll shout hallelujah and praise his real name. 
who redeemed us to God through the blood of the Lamb. The sound of its footsteps is rolling along. The kingdom of Satan triumphant so long is shaking and tottering and down we should fall. For Jesus the Saviour shall reign over all. The army's work of evangelism and social action rapidly progressed and branches were established in all parts of the world. William Booth wrote several books, the best of best known of which was which was in Darkest England and the Way Out. In 1912 he was promoted to glory with his son William Bramwell Booth, sorry, and his son William Bramwell Booth succeeded him as general. Sound problems. Ah, okay. If it's not one thing, it's another with my technology, it seems. Um, not quite sure what I can do about that, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Uh, I will... I was watching a council thing yesterday on I was watching actually I was watching a council thing yesterday and um, the sound on that was fine for me but many people were saying that they couldn't hear anything as well so I do apologize I'm gonna soldier on and uh, tomorrow I'll see if I can get my laptop to work and there might be no sound and no vision. So there are some great people that we read about uh, day by day. And um, William and Catherine Booth are two examples of that who have a legacy which is felt today in this town with the work going on at Booth House and uh, Gloucester House up in Highworth as well, and uh, out in the community. Not to mention the, the, the churches that the Salvation Army have in Swindon as well. They are a real blessing and bringing God's light to many dark situations, an example to us all. Let's have a moment of quiet as we recognise that we are coming before Almighty God, that same God that William and Catherine would serve and proclaim is the same God that we worship today. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. God, be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Let your way may be known upon the earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to use Psalm 78, uh, verses 1 to 39. Please do respond how you wish. It's been interesting when... Uh, I've been following Alvin. I've been doing different things. So sometimes I've been uh, saying the psalm al along with, with Alvin. Sometimes I've been saying every other um, verse as we do for the recorded services on the Sunday. And sometimes if you've got the little red 
um, diamonds. I've been saying the second part of, of each verse and uh, or sometimes you might just like to, to listen and let the words um, soak in and flow over you. To Psalm 78. O oh Lord, how glorious are your works. Hear my teaching, O oh my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will pour forth mysteries from of old such as we have heard and known, which our forebears have told us. We will not hide from their children, but will recount to, ger to generations to come the praises of the Lord and his power and the wonderful works he has done. He laid a solemn charge on Jacob and made it a law in Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children, that the generations to come might know, and the children yet unborn, that they in turn might tell it to their children, so that they so that they might put their trust in God and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments, and not be like their forebears, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast and whose spirit was not faithful to God. The people of Ephraim, armed with the bow, turned back in the day of battle. They did not keep the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. They forgot what he had done and the wonders he had shown them. For he did marvellous things in the sight of their forebears and in the land of Egypt and in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea and let them pass through. He made the waters stand still in a heap. He led them with a cloud by day and all the night through the blaze with, with, with a blaze of fire. He split the hard rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as from the great deep. He brought streams out of the rock and made water gush out like rivers. Yet for all this they sinned more against him and defied, defied the Most High in the wilderness. They tested God in their hearts and demanded food for their craving. They spoke against God and said, Can God prepare a table in the wilderness? He struck the rock indeed so that waters gushed out and the streams overflowed but can he give bread or provide meat for his people when the lord heard this he was full of wrath a fire was kindled against jacob and his anger went out against israel for they had no faith in god and put no trust in his saving help so he commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven he rained down upon them manna to eat and gave them the grain of heaven so mortals ate the bread of angels he sent them food in plenty he caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and led out the, led out the south wind by his might he rained flesh upon them as thick as dust and winged fowl like the sand of the sea he let it fall in the midst of their camp and round about their tents so they ate and were well fed were well filled, for he gave them what they deserved, desired. But they did not stop their craving. Their food was still in their mouths. When the anger of God rose against them they, and slew their strongest men and fell the flower of Israel. But for all this they sinned yet more and put no faith in his wonderful works. So he brought their days to an end like a breath and their years in sudden terror. Whenever he slew them, they would seek him. They would repent and earnestly search for God. They remembered that God was their rock and the most high God, their redeemer. Yet they did, yet they did but flatter him with their mouth and disassembled with their tongue. Their heart was not steadfast toward them, neither were they faithful to his covenant. But they but he was so merciful that he forgave their misdeeds and did not destroy them. Many a time he turned back his wrath and did not suffer his whole displeasure to be roused. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes by and does not return. 
O Lord, how glorious are your works. God, our deliverer, as you led your ancestors through the wilderness, so lead us through the wilderness of this world, that we may be saved through Christ forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. really interesting psalm as uh, the people of God um, were in the wilderness and it's a reminder that God was looking after them all the time. Uh, the Bible is a, a, a story of God and his people and uh, God is faithful throughout, all the way right through. Um, but the people are kind of wavering and up and down and it kind of sums it up there. And we, we continue that story now. We, 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 we're, we're still on that journey. Do you remember the, um, the Bible course that we did? And there was that con kind of continuum. We're, we're not at the end yet. We, we, we're still progressing along on our journey with God. And I think sometimes we waver. And the history of, of the church and the history of God's people wavers. God is constant throughout there and he recognises our weaknesses we have this song of the covenant I've given you as a light to the nations and I've called you in righteousness thus says God who created the heavens who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nation to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Uh, the good thing about the uh, smaller camera, probably on the iPad, is that I can hide my cup of tea. Much easier. Sorry, just need a little bit of sustenance. We now come to Acts. Um, Acts chapter 4, verse 32. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership or of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and, the great, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it upon, at, at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as, as any had need. There was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. But a man named Ananias, with the consent of his wife Sapphira, sold a, a piece of property with his wife's knowledge. He kept back some of the proceeds and brought only a part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Ananias, Peter asked, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, were not the proceeds at your disposal? How is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You did not lie to us, but to God. Now when Ananias heard these words, he fell down and died. And a great fear seized all who heard it. 
the young, the young men came and wrapped up his body and carried him out and buried him. After an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what happened. Peter said to her, Tell me whether you and your husband sold the land for such and such a price. And he said, and she said, yes, that was the price. And Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to put the spirit of the Lord to the test? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. Immediately she fell down at his feet and died. When the young men came in, they found her dead. So they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear seized the whole church and all those who heard of these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. An interesting reading. And um, probably something we expect a little bit more from the Old Testament. But reminds us of... It reminds us actually of the giving everything up nature of discipleship and how that first church would give everything and share everything and took Jesus' commandments, uh, his teachings, really seriously to give everything that they had and share and there not to be any need. It's probably the closest we've, we've had to the kingdom of God on earth, or one of the closest to the kingdom of God being on earth in, in those terms. And that we had those that fell just a bit short, and nice and severe, and you know we could easily judge. Um, but it is a reminder and it's a kind of cautionary tale of, for us, really, about what do we hold back? What are we kind of keeping away? Um, yeah, it leaves a lump in your throat and a challenge to you, doesn't it? And, uh, you know, I'm no different. Um, great fear seized the whole church. Fear might not be quite the right word, but, um, but certainly a kind of awe, I suppose, and uh, um, a recognition of the power of God, which we all need to, to have. We all need to kind of have that uh, fear of the Lord. Not the fear where we're going to, we're kind of, you might get, you know, go onto a plane or something like that, but it, it's, it's that kind of awe and recognition of God. And then we have these responses. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Come to the Benedictus. Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of all that hate us, sorry, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, 
for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. We're now going to use uh, the words of the blessings which we have used over the past uh, number of years. Um, since before before I started, I know they may have changed, the wording may have changed very slightly, um, but it is the idea of praying across our parishes and across um, our community. So just for a moment, you might like to hold before God those whom are on your hearts, whom you wish to feel God's blessings at this time. Those who are maybe those who are suffering, maybe those you want to give thanks for. For those situations where you would wants God to intervene. Speaking our blessings comes from the Bible which tells us that when we speak blessings over people God responds. So claiming the promises of God's word we pray in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we take upon ourselves the authority Jesus delegated to us and in his name we speak to every household within our parishes and in our community. We bless you in the name of the Lord. We bless your marriages that they may be strong and whole and we, we bless your relationships that they may be strong and and whole. We bless the relationship between each partner, that they may be loving, forgiving, merciful and strong. We bless every intergenerational relationship within each household, that there may be peace and love and understanding flowing between each one. In Jesus' name we bless every network of wholesome and supportive friendship. We bless your health, that you may be strong and well. In Jesus' name, we resist any sickness or disease which seeks to invade these communities. And to every person we say, be well, be strong, be healthy. To any who are sick right now, we say we bless you in Jesus' name for a speedy recovery. We bless those who are in the autumn of their lives and all those who live and work in residential care, that they may know the peace and presence of God in their hearts. And in Jesus' name, we pray that they will have assurance and hope for the future. We speak blessings of patience, wisdom, protection and love to all carers and associated staff. We bless the wealth of every person in our communities, that they may have plenty to replace poverty. We bless you to have enough to live and enough to give. We bless the work of your hands, that whatever you turn your hand to, which is wholesome, may be profitable. 
We bless every wholesome enterprise that is conducted by you that it may prosper and be successful. In Jesus' name, we bless the businesses operating within our bounds, that they will flourish and employee-employer relationships will be wholesome, fair and full of integrity. We bless our local preschools and schools that they may be secure and safe for teachers and pupils alike. We bless the children's capacity to learn and develop relationships. We bless the governors and all the staff that they will know that they can trust and flourish if they put their faith in the Lord Jesus. We pray your blessing on all contact the church has with them in Jesus' name. We bless the local doctors, nurses, district nurses, carers and all the staff of Sandalwood Court as they minister to people that they may have wisdom, guidance, gentleness and understanding for their patients. We pray for the emergency services as they operate within our bounds, that they will be blessed with safety, protection and wisdom. We bless those working in the police and fire stations in the parish. But we pray for all the emergency services as they operate in our town. We thank you for their dedication, for their service. We thank you for all those that run into danger as we run away. We thank you for all those that look after us in our infirmity and in our illness. We thank you for all those in our health services who look after us when we are at our lowest. We pray for the local parish councils and the borough council and pray that they would be blessed as they serve their communities. And may they be guided as and may they be guided as they seek the best for them and look towards the future with wisdom. We speak to all the Christians in our communities and we say we bless you in the name of the Lord, that the Holy Spirit and the Word of God will flow out from you in power. We bless the we bless the hearts of all those who live here that you may be quickened to hear and respond to the voice of the living God. We bless all who live and work here, that the overspill of blessings and the presence of the kingdom of God may fall upon you. And uh, we give you thanks, dear Lord, for mere summer's arrival. And uh, we give you thanks that all is well. And we continue to pray for Dawn and Darren. And we pray, Lord, that they will recognise that many people have been praying for them over these past few days, waiting for this news as well. But we give you praise and thanks for the gift of new life, Lord. And we praise your name this morning. The collect for today. Merciful Redeemer, who by the life and preaching of your servant Bernard rekindled the radiant light of your church, grant us in our generation to be inflamed with the same spirit of discipline and love and are ever to walk before you as children of light through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, let us pray with confidence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
indeed, congratulations to Dawn and Darren and to Pat uh, for the wife of your great niece. And uh, I hope you have a I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Uh, I hope the sun continues to shine on you. Um, and I I hope um, we are together very soon. Uh, tomorrow morning. I hope I have a great uh, understanding of my uh, tablet and don't go fiddling around with it like I did to start with today. I do apologise if it's been difficult. Um, I'll look to see if I can find any answers to the kind of situation that we have technology-wise. Uh, but have a great day ahead then. So let's share the church prayer. Lord, be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us Help us to be a blessing to each other and our community, that your ways may be known among us. Let all the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Amen. 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 Stay safe and God bless. See you soon. Yeah.